because I, I can't direct the conversation if I don't know uh, in and out the, the technical limits of the product and uh, what can be scaled and what can't. Um, and also I need to understand who I'm talking to. So if I'm talking to a VP or an analyst or, or you know, um, investment uh, relations person, it's a different type of conversation. So I need to know what makes them tick. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leumi Tech, sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Opwest Labs, Turing, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Today, we're going to talk all about solutions engineering. What is it about and why is it so much fun? Meet in Balshalev, the head of solution engineering of Placer AI. She is a creative solution-oriented analytic expert and experienced in technology and intelligence environment. She has performed across the life cycle from requirements analysis to solution design and implementation with hands-on experience in data analytics and big data applications. She has a passion to bridge between end users and development teams. Technology-oriented intelligence officer, she was a cabal with vast team leader experience. In Balshalev, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a nice, uh, sunny morning here in uh, Tel Aviv. You're in the place or AI offices, right? Right, right. Uh, we're sitting in uh, the Bursa in Amat Gan. Um, it's fairly crowded. It's, it's been a while since it was that crowded. So we're now uh, after our uh, round B and starting recruiting. So it's, uh, it's a hustle here. I, yep. So, uh, you know, all over the Israeli news recently raised uh, over $50 million in your, in your round B. Um, you're in solutions engineering. And, and so we're going to talk soon about, about that and your role within Placer AI. But before we do that, I, mm-hmm. I'd love to get a little bit of context, both about your own journey and, and how, how you look at your own career, but also a little bit about Placer AI just for the context of where you work. Great. So Placer is doing location analytics and location intelligence. We are, uh, we are partnering with mobile apps and basically integrating location data of users. It's fully, uh, fully private. Uh, we're not sharing any information about, uh, about specific devices, but we take, uh, we take the location data of over 30 million devices in the U.S. So we have our, around 10% of the U.S. population, which is a great, <laughs> a great wow. sample. And we then, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's big. Uh, and we're able to estimate how how many uh, visits they did to various locations. So it's very mm-hmm. much like an election poll. You have a sample, you know how how much uh, each panelist represents of the population, and then mm-hmm. you can give amazing reports, you know, to show all of historical food traffic to a certain uh, shopping center or a Walmart. Um, and that information is super valuable. We're catering basically to... Um, uh, commercial real estate uh, brokers, as well as uh, hedge funds, retailers. We have amazing clients, you know, uh, from uh, Dollar General and Target um, to to hedge funds and CPG companies. Wow! And and so what yeah, is so, so what what does head of solution engineering do in that in, in a world like that? What what is <laughs> even solution engineering before we ask what does the head of it do? Mm-hmm. So the way the way I describe it is we are kind of the mitigator. We're the proxy between uh, between the client needs and the technical the technical requirements and the te- technical uh, um, basically uh, limitations. Right? We're still trying to to cater to our customers and and be flexible with with a startup uh, startup mode. And we are constantly looking at uh, at innovation. So a lot of the time, the product is defined to answer certain business questions, but then a new client comes in and, and asks for things that we didn't think of. And then we either provide it as a custom report or um, add more requirements to the, to the product. And, and we're there to, to help help out in these cases, in these edge cases, where there are either product gaps or some kind of risky situation with sales and, and customer success. 
can you walk me through, you know, even a case study or some more tangible example of well, how, what does a solution engineer actually do within, within an organization? Where, where, where is a solution engineer coming into place? Because it sounds from what you're describing that you're not necessarily involved in every, you know, every development operation and every feature that is being requested. Uh, and there is sort of this, you know, interesting gray area where a solutions engineer can come and help mitigate a lot of this dialogue. Right. So um, in, many, in many companies, solutions engineering are helping the sales team to, mm -hmm. to build decks and to build use cases to help sell. Um, that's, that's one piece of, of solutions. The, in Placer, it's a bit different because there are also, we have an amazing sales team that's highly proficient and the product is amazing. You, only, you, you get a demo on and, and usually um, the use cases are there. Uh, and what I am pulled in to do is is these more advanced questions, advanced needs. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, interaction with a data science team, and and then you know the the technical uh, conversation is a bit a bit deeper. Right. Um, it it can be defining a new defining a new vertical. Right. So for example, our, our first airports that came in, we didn't know what we have to offer and what what's going to help them out. So I was involved in that situation to understand if our solution is good enough, what's our limitation, how we can make sure that we're onboarding them and, and you know, not overloading our system and still creating value for them. And so what is what is the day to day of this of this job look like? So you, it sounds like you're working both with the clients, you're working both with the engineering teams, you're doing also mm -hmm. research in between. How, how does it actually operate? It's a great question. I think it's it's one of the most uh, centric. I, I think I'm working with the most amount of teams in the company. So uh, on on one side, I'm client facing. So I'm working with the the sales team and the customer success team in front of prospects and and customers. Mm -hmm. and, and that is looking at those uh, edge cases that we discussed. But on the other side, it's um it's discussing with uh, with the product team understanding right. how our roadmap looks like, how we can incorporate or push in a bit like more small stones that can be great wins with clients and prospects that will help mm -hmm. sell more and help raise client satisfaction. Uh, it's also working with the data analytics team. So um, that define and design piece, making sure that, uh, that what we're actually uh, doing is answering the use case of the client. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, that. That requires a lot of a lot of technical understanding, uh, in addition to knowing how to package it all and frame it in a client-facing way. Now, it, it sounds to me like what, and what you mentioned before, this uh, idea of solutions engineering is, is not yet a, a very common one or is not a very well-known one for people that are looking to decide what they want to do, you know, whether they want to be right. certain researchers and engineers, product managers, what, why, why do you think that is? And what, what type of personality do you, do you think fits the solutions engineering role? Yeah, it's, um, I, I wasn't aware of this type of role um, until the, the last, let's say three years. I didn't even mm -hmm. know it exists. Um, and to your question, I think it. It requires both highly, highly, um, highly technical understanding. So it's it can't be like a first position. It can be right. someone straight out of the uh, school. And, and why not? So, so what, 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 be... what about this job requires that extra experience? So in the on the analytics side, you you need to see a few things. You know, you need to be around to understand what works and what doesn't, and you have to experience mm -hmm. some success and failures, in my opinion. I, I don't hire any anyone to this position that's, uh, that's his first job. Um, mm -hmm. and, but it can come from many places. I, I have solutions engineering that came from product, that came from uh, consulting, that came from data analytics. That's, that's all valid. But it needs to be a person that has that um that creative mindset i think that's the point you know you need to you need to see uh to be able to kind of pull out information from from who you're talking to understand yeah. where you want to lead the conversation and, and it's it's a it's a lot of soft skills a lot of uh, a lot of soft skills and a lot of uh, 
based on a lot of technical knowledge because I, I can't direct the conversation if I don't know uh, in and out the, the technical limits of the product and what can be scaled and what can't. Um, and also I need to understand who I'm talking to. So if I'm talking to a VP or an analyst or, or you know, um, investment uh, relations person, it's a different type of conversation. So I need to know what makes them tick. Um, and and help help them solve their their use case, help them reach success with our data. Right. And so one of the things that we we talked about before we started this was pretty much how much you're enjoying what you're doing and finding you know yeah. the, the happiness and the satisfaction with with the everyday position. And I mm-hmm. mentioned that you know this is a fascinating topic because I, you know what I'm seeing right. around me and a lot of people you know we 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 tend to run so fast and we we rush towards. You know, things, and we sometimes we forget to stop and, and enjoy the work that we're actually doing. And so tell me a little bit about your experience, either with place or with solutions engineering and, and what, what satisfaction it brings you. Yeah, that's a great question. I think, I think what I love about this position uh, is that it's never boring, right? I, it's like, it's never repetitive. I am, I am, I am. I'm meeting new pl- people and new, new types of uh, challenges every day. Um, it, it's not for everyone, right? Some people need their routine and need to have a very clear, uh, clear defined goals. But I like the action. I, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I, I need it, right? So, so for me, it's fun. It's fun to get in a conversation and I don't know how I'll get out of it. Um, I, I don't know where it's going to lead me, but, but I'm excited about that uh, relationship and what we can make and, you know, and coming into it with a smile, I think it's one of the best uh, advices I got, right? It's all about uh, communication and people relationship. And so I think that's what's most fun for me, that uh, interaction and that um, ingenuity and innovation in each uh, relationship. So I need, to, I need to get my brain going with each, with each, each discussion. Right. And so do you ever feel like you know, almost an outsider to an organization, if you're, if what I'm hearing correctly, that you are sort of this connector between a lot of different moving pieces within the organization, but also with one leg outside of the organization, because at the end you're bringing those solutions, those. So there must be times when you're, you, you might have an idea that is maybe not exactly what some of the engineering teams thought or what some of the clients thought and you still have to sort of connect those gaps yeah. and and find a common ground it, that that doesn't seem like an easy thing to do okay you're so right you know that's and i think the fact that i'm situated in israel with the team makes it so much easier because i've been mm. in organizations when the, where the solutions engineering team was based in another state mm-hmm. uh, away from that engineering p- side and and it makes all the difference in my opinion because before I before I promise something, I go and I speak to our to our right. to our data analytics lead. I'm talking to the product. I'm making sure that we're all aligned, um, and right. and not uh, and and I don't put this the company in the situation or the people <laughs> in the situation they don't want to be with in. Um, but you know it's it's very easy in in organizations to to use authority, and I don't believe in that. I believe in in you know. Uh, partnership, communication, and and having that um, that open discussion before we reach a decision and do it together. Uh, so uh, sometimes I feel like an outsider, but I'm also um, I'm using my my skills to to make it uh, to to create partnerships with with the engineering team, with the product team, with the analytics team, so that um, they like helping me, they want to help me, and they see that that success later on. And they're happy about it. They're excited about it. And we're creating that excitement internally. Now, when you look at the team that you're leading, what, what does this sort of internal training look like? So how do, how do you actually support the people that are working with you and in, in, in helping them become better or, or training this mindset? Because it sounds like this is, you know, a lot of these skills that you're mentioning, these are not skills that you yeah. just gain from academia or from necessarily previous experiences. You have to live through them. Right. Indeed, yes. Uh, so we are. Because we need combined skills, I'm, I'm combining a lot of the trainings of other teams. So the team is going through many, many types of, uh, of training with the support team. So actually hands-on 
creations of locations, looking at the under the hood, how how all that system works, how we're combining those the foot traffic and the location. Um, so support and then data analytics, um, going in and having even a day with each team to to get to know them and also to to understand what types of of reporting they're they're uh, currently doing. And a lot of shadowing with me and with the team, the, the customer success and the sales team. There is at least 10 calls with, uh, with sales and with customer success before, uh, before we are even starting to talk about the, their own projects. So, and then, you know, ongoing projects to, to create that skill set. I'm also right. really, really important for me to have people that can play with data and understand it. So my, my requirements are as a baseline to have some kind of coding language and BI tools proficiency. Mm -hmm. And so when you actually go through and how, how do you actually have a, every person running different, you know, different projects, different features, different integrations? Are you working as a team on, on each of them? How does it actually work? Yeah, because it, because it's so important to create a um, relationship in this type of role, we are assigning to each um, to each solutions engineer a few accounts that mm -hmm. are strategic that he's joining and you know making sure it's they're on the right track. Uh, those are a lot of time high high demand ones, right? So they're helping out and making sure we're we're getting to a successful engagement. Yes, and it's an ongoing game. Um, relationship building so yes everyone is assigned to different projects um but we, we we have a lot of sales engagements as well and that's like quick in and out mm, i see and so do, do, you, do you think that the solutions engineering that you're experiencing at placer is this you know what, what is happening you know around the ecosystem around solutions engineering is this something that has been going on for a while because i i also i haven't really heard about solutions engineering yeah. pretty much until this conversation yeah it's it's been you know for me it was in my last position i was a head of data analytics and and i was managing tons of people i was i had 40 people in three different states <laughs> and you know, wow. as a manager, what, what I used to, to do is, is get that um, requirements from, um, from a new account and, and deliver on it. And then when I, I started an engagement, I then uh, understood that they, they miscalculated the effort completely, right? Um, we might have sold it for, for X, but, you know, I had to invest, invest 2X in terms of, of uh, money to deliver. Right. And then we're in a loss. Uh, and, and I found myself because I was getting, getting more and more involved in these, uh, in these spaces of, of um, estimations versus uh, reality. Mm -hmm. I, I found myself more and more engaged with the, with the sales process, with, the, with that onboarding piece. And, and I found that there is a big disconnect, a big disconnect between what we are, uh, what we're selling, what we're expecting, and what's happening on the ground. And I, I did find myself very, very passionate in help in helping uh, to to mitigate that gap uh, and set right expectation. Because you know, at the end of the day, what do you do in that uh, scenario? You either reduce uh, content. And then the, the the end result is an unhappy client that is not getting what he paid for, <laughs> or you are putting in much more effort and then you're in a losing right. position. So I think in many cases, that's the, that's the, 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 that's what's happening because solutions are usually on the sales and business side, not very connected to the, to the R and D product and, and that, uh, that side of the, uh, um, that side of the world of the company world. So I think, and of course, it's not like that in, in every company. That's just my personal mm -hmm. experience. I think right. when it works good, there is good connection. And, and that's a, that's a team that helps reduce friction and helps them um, really, really create success with complex accounts and complex deals. Right. 
No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and in Bale, you know, I'm, I thank you for introducing me to this world. Uh, it was, it was really, you know, interesting for me to, to get into the mind of, of a solutions engineer and, and, and find a new, you know, a new vertical that I, that I didn't really think too much about before this conversation. So thank you for your time. I have a few questions about you and Bal, not, not about Placer, not about solutions engineering. And I want you to go back, you know, take me back to your childhood and tell me what, what fascinated you as a kid? What is perhaps a subject in school or a passion hobby that really fascinated fascinated you yeah i think i am i've always been a, a very creative person um i was always painting since i remember myself so that that was that the part that i was most uh most uh, connected to i i love painting i love everything that's plastic art uh, yeah, that's that's my that's my love. Amazing, and one of your inspirations along the way, somebody, a role model, or somebody that inspires you in some way, shape, or form. So the the thing I'm, it's not a, it is a real person, but there is this book that was really that really inspired me as a, as a child. Um, it's called Butterfly. I don't know if you are familiar with that. But it's about a French prisoner that was accused by a, with a crime, with a murder that he didn't commit. And he was sent to, to French's um, colonies in, in Africa. And, and the whole story, it's a real story. There is also a movie about it. Um, and the, the whole story was about his, um, he was running away from prisons for about, like mm -hmm. three or four times. And and that really hit me as like the human nature of survival and your 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 drive for freedom. So I think that's a great ex inspiration for me. That wow! Butterfly, that person. Yeah. Very very cool. And what are three words that you would use to describe yourself? So I would say um, creative, of course. Uh, repeating the subject here, <laughs> I would say that I'm a, I'm a friendly. And smart. Thank you very, very much, Inbal. Toda rabba rabba. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing this time with me. And uh, best of luck with Placer. It sounds like you're doing amazing things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>